Welcome back guys, it's flip time. In today's video, we are taking an old fire pit and turning it into an adorable plant stand. Let's go ahead and get started. Doing some spring cleaning, my boyfriend was cleaning out our garage and we had an old fire pit that had just like rusted out and just been a little bit overworn and he was just gonna toss it. He knows how I am, so he saved the base of it and asked me if there was anything I wanted to do. I got really excited and decided to turn it into a plant stand. So I started out with the old frame. I cleaned it up and I just gave it a good coat of the Rust-Oleum 2X um, paint and primer in Ultra Matte, I believe. Um, I always try to use matte sprays, but they didn't have the regular, so this is just a preference. And then I sealed that with the Rust-Oleum 2X clear coat. Um, also in a mat. Now the next trick was going to be figuring out how to attach the top to the frame. I didn't want to compromise the frame at all um, and I've never really done anything like this on my own before so I just kind of walked through the steps and um, bounced some ideas around and decided to go with the following. I went to my local hardware store. I went ahead and picked up the wood round. That was the easy part. Um, this frame is 21 inches wide and they go from 18 to 24. And so I picked up the 24 inch round. It was around $20 and it was a perfect fit for the frame. The next thing I needed to do was get the brackets, the screws and the bolts. So for the brackets to attach it, I just got some of the L brackets. I think they're called corner brackets. Um, I just did it according to the size that um, would fit best on this frame and be nice and sturdy. It comes with screws already, which would be just fine for the wood, but I did need something to attach it to the metal. So I was able to pick up some bolt nuts and bolts in order to secure it. That way um, it's nice and secure on both sides. I was planning to include a lock washer on that, which those will just help um, secure it to where the they don't just kind of unscrew on their own as it's being transported around or moved throughout its lifetime. However, my bolts weren't quite long enough. I kind of misjudged how long I needed them to be. So that's okay. I have it on there really nice and secure by the end of this. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. To make everything match, I took the same black spray paint and I spray painted all of my hardware and then also sealed that. And all of that is now ready for the top. Now for the top of this, I am just going to be using some of the Waverly Antiquing Wax watered down. So this is just a preference thing. Um, one, it helps it kind of glide on easier, but two, I didn't want it super dark. So I just mixed it to where it kind of gave me the tone that I was looking for. And then I applied that to both the front and the back, just one coat. Um, I did half of it and then just be careful with your overlapping. So if you do half of it like I did and then wipe off the extra, make sure when you meet in the middle there that you wipe it immediately so you don't see any overlapping strokes. Um, and then also just be careful around the rim that there's no, um, not too much stuff um, going on to the underside. Plan ahead which side you want to be your front and your back. That way um, you kind of know in advance which side you want to keep pretty and which side, if there are any issues, um, it won't be a big deal to just make that the bottom of the table. Now, I wanted to do a cute design on this, and I just kept going back and forth, but I just jumped on Cricut Design and found this really cute flower plant, and then I just typed in and picked a font that I liked to save the plants. Um, I just think that's a cute little a little something special to add to it to just to give it a little bit more character. So to do this, I cut it out on some contact paper. Now I've talked about this before in my videos, but if you're new here, um, I like to use contact paper for my stencils just because it's a big money saver for me. Now it is a bit of a headache in certain scenarios because it's so thin. Um, you really have to be very patient with it and kind of delicate with it to get it to stay flat where it needs to and not it's like it can stretch very easily so if you don't take your time you'll ruin it and it'll be more of a headache than it would be to just pay to get something better however i've learned how to work with it um like i said just take some extra care and especially on like very flat smooth pieces of wood or metal or glass or anything like that it works extremely well however it's not great for anything textured so keep that in mind um, i do have in my affiliate links um 
just the contact paper that I'm using and I do use it on the washi tape setting. Um, and then to use with that, I have like the masking tape transfer tape. I love this transfer tape. That's also in my affiliate links. It is the perfect amount of sticky. So just enough to get the stuff to stick to it, but it's never given me any issues with peeling off any of my painted and sealed already done items. So I don't have to sit here and stress about, oh my gosh, this looks perfect exactly how I want, but now I have to add the stencil or now I have to add my vinyl. Is it going to just rip it off and ruin it? So I highly suggest this stuff. I love it. It works fantastic. Um, so that's my little plug for that. After I got everything cut out and weeded and transferred on, I just kind of eyeballed the center, but if you're not comfortable with that, make sure you do some measuring. This particular image um, is kind of offset, so the pot is one way and it's heavier on the leaves than the other, so I really truly did just kind of eyeball what looked good to me. I stuck it down and then it was time to stencil. Um, a little stencil trick, if you use, um, because I use stain, using a color to match wouldn't work, but say you had a surface that you had painted white. You can either use that same color paint or you can use Mod Podge and Mod Podge works on any, so stain, paint, whatever, because it dries clear. And you can use that to kind of seal in your stencil. So what that's gonna do is you just apply it as if you would um, anything else, just kind of paint it over. And it's going to kind of flood those areas where it might not be sticking, you know, very well um, and just kind of close off all of the edges. That way you won't have any bleeding or not near as much bleeding. Sometimes it just happens and that's okay, but it's a really, really big game changer if you want very crisp lines whenever you remove your stencil. So I like to use Mod Podge just because then I don't have to worry about color matching or anything like that. Um, so I just apply that on and let it dry completely. Um, if you don't, then it can just mix with the run together with the paint and then run under anyway. So just be patient, let it dry completely, and then go ahead and apply what other, whatever um, color paint or paste that you're gonna be using. I am using a stencil brush. A stencil brush is just a hard bristle brush that um, applies the paint for you. Again, the contact paper is a bit sensitive, so if it's tinier pieces that are, you know, could easily move around, even with the Mod Podge helping it stay in place, I kind of dab it, um, which would work really well with like, you know, a sponge or something as well. And then on the bigger areas where I know it's really secure, I like to kind of swirl. And that just gives me really good coverage. And then I don't have to worry about any weird kind of brussels, like brush strokes or anything. And I typically always do two, possibly three coats of the paint in that um, kind of fashion whenever I'm doing a stencil. Again, that's personal preference, how dark you want it, how much coverage you want. If you want more of like a, like rustic, um, like aged look, you might not need to do that much. And then also, if you want a rustic kind of aged look on your stencil to make it match a piece, maybe you've um, like sanded down and stuff. If you take a piece of really fine grit sandpaper and lightly sand over it, it'll kind of distress your edges for you and make it meet that look too. Again, I'm going for really crisp lines here, so I'm gonna just get that applied on and then I want to remove the contact paper. You can do this when it's dry, um, if you're very careful, you can do this when it's wet. Um, today I did it when it was wet just because I am out of patience and I just want to see this put together so bad. Um, and also sometimes when it's completely dry, I have had issues with it peeling because I do typically just use acrylic paint when um, I'm doing my stencils. So I peeled it when it was wet and this thing looks gorgeous. I love, love, love it. The stencil... Worked out really, really well this time. I didn't have hardly any bleeding. Um, any little mishaps that you see on there are just because I messed up. Like I said, I took it off wet and I like hit something or whatever, but that's okay. It just gives it character. And then the next thing I need to do is seal in the wood. So I do want this to be a plant stand for somebody. So if they're using real plants, then there's water involved. And in case there was some type of leak, I wanna make sure that that piece is protected until that mess can be cleaned up. So I used lacquer on this. I used a crystal clear mat. And I did, I believe, I did two coats on the bottom just to make sure that it's sealed in too. And then I think I did five coats on the top. And when I say coats, it's a spray paint. It's um, a lighter coat. Let it dry thoroughly. And then I did um, it in different directions. So when I do my spray painting, I'm not necessarily great at it 
if I'm being honest, but I'm getting better. So if I had my wood round, you know, I have my image or kind of like a guide to go off of. If you don't have an image, like on this particular one I'm doing, it's like a glued board together. I can see the lines. So for instance, um, the lines are horizontal. I sprayed down this way. So the next time I went the opposite direction, the next time I went diagonal, the next time I did, did opposite of that. So if that makes sense that way, you're spraying from every different direction and you're less likely to miss any spots. Um, like I said, with this one, it's important to me that it's sealed in. And if I have any weak spots in my coverage or in my sealant, then it's going to cause some problems for the future owner. And I'm going to do my best to avoid that. So now that it's all sealed in and good to go, we have to prep this frame and attach it. Now, I will say that at the beginning, I did not do so great with this. Um, on this rim that I'm attaching it to, there's kind of like a crease right in the middle. So I didn't really have to measure a mark to know where to drill each time. I just went directly on that line. However, I did mess up because I wanted the brackets to be closer to the legs so everything kind of blended together. What I didn't realize is on the inside, there's like a fancy little like welded bar and it comes out further than the legs and further than I expected it to. So I put my hole too close. So when I went to put my bracket on, it was, um, it couldn't lay completely flat. So I did have to restart on drilling my holes and I decided to just put them in the center um, of each side of where the legs are. So I went through, I drilled, just be very careful. Um, this does have two sides of it where I'm attaching. So I just went carefully through the first side and then stopped for a second and reset to make sure it was nice and straight going through the next side. Went through and then did that for all four holes. And then I was ready to attach my brackets using the bolts that I picked up. So I went ahead and put those on on each side, tried to make sure that they were nice and straight and flat. Um, and not tilted to the side at all because that would kind of mess up the level um, of the top. Once that was ready, I was ready to go ahead and mark my holes in the wood to drill my screws. So I laid a piece, some paper towel down to make sure I'm not going to mess with my image. Again, I have sealed this in so it should be fine, but I really don't want to be the one to scratch this you know, before it even gets where it's going, especially when the sealant is still fresh even though it's dry. So. Make sure you're protecting your stuff. You can put a towel down or something, um, a sheet, anything. So I laid it face down. I took the um, the legs or the stand. I laid it upside down on top of it. And then I took my measuring tape and made sure that it was an equal amount or an equal distance to each edge from all directions. For me, this worked out easy. It was a 21 inch frame um, and it was about an inch from the side on each side. Um, that's an estimate. So I just kind of looked where does it meet up and then checked that all around to keep it center. I took a pencil and I went ahead and marked my holes. That way I could remove the frame and get a good, nice, straight pilot hole. Um, make sure when you do your pilot holes that if you're using a screw, it's smaller than the screw. That way the screw still has something to bite into. Um, with your bolts on the metal, you want it to be equal size. That way it still fits snug, so I still had to kind of like use my um, screwdriver to screw it in to get it through. It fit like it was almost a perfect fit. So it was snug, but it has to be able to go through. Um, the bolts don't have a sharp pointy end or anything to kind of like force it through. So that's just a little FYI if you're not familiar um, with anything like this. This is pretty new to me as well. I typically have lots of help in my boyfriend because he's very handsy like that. So. Um, again, pilot hole is smaller than your screw. It's better to go smaller than needed rather than do it too big and ruin the hole that you need to screw down into. So after all my pilot holes were done, you want to make sure that you're very careful. You don't go too deep because you don't want to go through the face of the, of the top. So I just was very gentle, um, just did as much as I possibly thought I needed and then stopped because I am kind of a loose cannon and I didn't want to ruin the project. So once that was ready, we're ready to lay the frame back down, line it up, check all of your holes to make sure that it's lined back up, not just on the one you're working on, but all of the other areas too, just in case something might be slightly off. And then you're ready to add your screws. 
I went ahead and used the screw gun to put them in initially and then I didn't tighten them all the way down. I wanted to make sure that everything fell into place all the way around. So I put all of the screws in and then I went back in with the screwdriver to finish tightening them down. Um, and then all, this also helped me ensure that I didn't strip my screws because again, I can use a screw gun, but I'm not always the best at it. So um, just be careful with that. And that's almost the end of the project. I flipped it over. I absolutely love it. And honestly, filming this right now, still not completely sure if I'm going to, but the brackets do hang down a little further, which I knew would happen and is why I wanted to originally put them by the legs. That way it kind of blended. Um, so you can see it. I'm considering using the Dremel and drilling, like cutting it off and then filing it down because I'm worried that if I do that, it'll be sharp metal. And if somebody goes to pick it up, they're going to slice their hand. So as long as I file it really well, it shouldn't be an issue. But I'm also wondering if it's even worth my time. So you'll find out <laughs> whether or not um, I did this. So that is an option if that's something you want to do. Um, like I said, I'm unsure if I want to just leave it or not. But I love this project. I would really love some feedback on what you guys think about this. Um, is it something that you're going to try? Um, give me some tips if you think there's anything I could have done to make this easier for myself. Again, this is I do all kinds of projects and stuff, but typically when I get the power tools out, um, I at least have some consultation on what, what I'm going to do or what I'm planning to do. So very happy to have you guys here with me today. If you're returning, thank you so much. If you're new, consider subscribing. We would love to have you join our journey. We get into a little bit of everything and don't stray away from a challenge. So thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to take you in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.